Hey, this is Jim Kay from StairwayToVideo.com with another one of my video tips. Today we have a chance to try out this brand new to the market dual wireless microphone set from Comica. It's called the CVM WM300. It looks pretty heavy duty. Let's open it up, see what it looks like, and see if it works like they say. Come on, let's get started. My set did not include the handheld wireless microphone shown on the box. The first thing you'll notice is a really nice Pelican style carry case. And it's nicely padded too. You get the manual, two transmitters, one receiver, two lavalier microphones, three belt clips, two dead cat windscreens, three cold shoe adapters, two USB charging cables, an XLR to 8th inch stereo cable, and an 8th inch to 8th inch stereo cable. The first thing I noticed about these Comica WM300 microphones is the fact that they, uh, the fit and finish is just phenomenal on them. They're, they're heavy, the, uh, it's nice and smooth. As you can see, I've got the belt clip attached to these. Um, but boy, oh boy, it just feels great. So probably the first thing you want to do is to pull these plastic screen protectors off. Take that one off, that one off, and that one off. And let's do let's do this first. Let's let's weigh these. So I'm going to bring my scale over here. So this is the uh, this is the receiver. It weighs about 8.1 ounces or 230 grams. And here's the transmitter, 7.7 .7 ounces or 217 grams. That's approximate. This isn't uh, the greatest scale in the world. So let's plug in the microphones. This one's already in. Let's plug this guy in. Okay, just turn them on. There's the uh, on off button. All right, now we're going to want to scan for the best channel possible that has the least amount of interference. So if you look on our receiver, if you look close, it says uh, Group A, channel 33. Group B is at channel 57. If you look at Group A and Group B, uh, Group B is 66, channel 66. Group A is channel 41. So they're not even close as far as channels. So what we need to do is um, take our receiver, uh, go into group A. All right, so we're into group A. We're gonna wanna auto scan. So we're gonna hit set. And if you look close, it's now trying to find the best channel that's clear for group A. So it's gonna scan all 96 of the channels It's telling us that uh, for group A, the best channel is 47. We're gonna hit set. Now, if we go into this one, this is group A, and right now it's on channel 41. In order to get that to set with this, there's two ways to do it. We can either take this and change it to uh, channel 47, or we can hit the auto sync button. We take this, Group A setting sync with transmitter. So we're going to hit set. Now it's going to sync. Now look at that it's going red. We want to point the IR top of the IR button to this. And now you can tell that group A, notice how it's not flashing anymore. Group A on both the transmitter and the receiver are now not flashing. They're solid green. So now we want to get into doing the same thing with group B. So let's scroll down to so it says setting group A. We want to select OK. We want to change it to group B. Set. So now we're in group B. Now we want to go and auto scan group B. All right, so this says channel 57 and group B is on channel 66. So let's hit set. And 
and that's channel 75. It says use channel 75, hit set. Now let's change it to group B setting, sync with transmitter. We're going to hit OK. Now, see how it's flashing red? We're going to let the IR, IRs scan with each other. Now that has turned to green. So now we're synced. We've got the correct channels for each transmitter and receiver. So that's how you set it up and uh, get the, the correct channels that are the clearest on these three units. There are other settings too that you can uh, change on this unit. So for an example, I've got the microphone part here. Um, let's go in here. So you can, you could go back, you could set factory default if you wanted to do that. You hit the set button, it changes everything back to factory default. I don't want to do that because I've got them set up right now. You can put on a, a low cut filter. So in other words, if I wanted to change uh, the microphone and set it to have a low cut filter on, low cut filter will get rid of any kind of rumbling or maybe even in a, in a guy, say chest or deep voice uh, rumblings, or if your air conditioning is on, it'll help to get rid of that. But uh, I don't want to do that at the moment. So we're going to go back and take that off, off. Um, I have chosen the microphone setting. You can also have what's called, uh, have a line in setting. We're not going to change that. Oops. Chain goes back after a little while. Mic input setting. So if I want to do, um, change it to a line in, you can click that, but we're going to leave it at mic. This is for your backlight. You can have the delay of the backlight. So I've got it set for 60 seconds. Um, you can set it for as little as, uh, I think it's 10 seconds. Or you can, if you have it off, so there's no backlight, you can just go as little as 10 seconds, 30, or 60. So we're going to leave it for 60. I've got it on 60 because I'm doing this video right now. Now, RF power setting. So I've got it on low. And the reason I have it on low is because most everything I'm doing at the moment is going to be in my studio here, which is going to be no longer than 6 to 10 feet away. So what you could do is, if you were outside, um, you could set this to high. And high is good for, I figure what it is, you know, over 80 or 100 meters, something like that. But for what we're doing right now, we want that to be kept at low. And I've got the volume setting. Now, if I've got the mic here, <clears throat> notice that the gain on the bottom there is going up and down as I talk. So that's why it's it doesn't seem to be going super high, only when it, it peaks a little bit. But I've kept it on uh, volume 15. So we'll see how that sounds once I connect it to the uh, camera. And at the top, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a... A red IR button that's what you do when you sync it to the uh, transmitter to the receiver the transmitter to the receiver you use those two IR IR windows that uh, that's how it's able to auto sync if you want to be able to mute it which I've, I've got it that way so say your talent or the person wearing the microphone wanted to mute it and didn't want it to go into the camera or to be saved you can just press this once the red light comes on and it is now muted so let's shut that off. On the receiver end of it, um, we can go into, let's, let me show you here. You can set this up so that you've got the output as mono, or you can change it to stereo. So then you'd have different sounds coming out of your left side speaker as opposed to your right side speaker. So if your channel A is set up, it would come out of your, say, left side. And if your channel B would go out of your right side, but for what I'm doing right now, I'm going to go back here and change. Oh, no, it's already on mono. Okay, I thought I left it on stereo. Leave it on mono. The other thing I wanted to say, too, is the, the great thing about this, this has rechargeable batteries in it. And it's got a um, port on the bottom. You, you can either charge it through your, uh, I think, it through your computer or if you have a, um, a USB type of charger. And that's what these guys are that come, come with it. They're little charging cords so you can charge up your transmitters and your receiver. So let's plug it into the camera. Now slide the WM300 receiver into the hot shoe adapter on top of your digital SLR camera. Get that nice and tight. And now use this attached cable that comes with the WM300. Plug it into the output on the WM300, not in the uh, headphone in jack, or headphone out jack, I should say. And I'll take this and plug it into the mic port on the camera. 
Now, if you want to monitor something like with a set of headphones, so you have a set of headphones like this, you take that jack and plug it into the headphone jack right here. Bingo, you're ready to go. Right now, I've got the, uh, the transmitter A is the only one that's running right now, going through the uh, receiver. So I've got it set up for um, low power. So we've got low and high power. I also have the volume set to volume 12. And I figured out that you have to have the volume on both the receiver and the transmitter set to the same number. And then I do gain staging in the camera like I show in my other video. In fact, I'll show it right here. This is the uh, video where I did gain staging to show you how to gain stage a digital SLR camera. So again, I'm not using this guy. This is on my, uh, this is on uh, B, the B channel. This is on the A channel. Um, so let's do a little bit of a test. Testing one, two, three, sound check, one, two, mic check, one, two, three. Um, let's give it uh, five seconds of silence. Okay, so we'll check, we'll go in and we'll check the sound off of this guy right now and see how it's doing. There's a couple other things I wanted to tell you. Um, one, of, one of the lavalier mics, so you get two lavalier mics along with these two transmitters. One of the lavalier mics was defective, and uh, the only reason I was able to have another one was because Comica had sent me another set of wireless, um, wireless microphones uh, in the past, and so I used that one for it. So that was the one thing that was defective. The other thing that was defective is you saw me earlier um, plug this um, stereo cable from the transmitter into my digital SLR camera, and this is defective too, so I had to use my own stereo cable to get this uh, uh, plugged into and get it to work. So um, let's install this one, which is channel B, into the camera and see if we can get it to work in stereo. All right, I now have both microphones turned on. So here is A that's attached to me right here, right there. And I've got the B, uh, the B channel is right here, but I have it muted because I want to do this little test with stereo. So let me unclip this. In fact, let me undo this one so I've got a little bit of, uh, let me undo this one so I've got a little bit of motion here. I've got a little bit of cord length so I can do the motion. All right, so this is A. Let's put it over here. Well, we'll leave it the way it is. This is A, and now I'm gonna unmute B. And this is B. So this should be going from one side to the other. So this is, I've got this, the switch on top of the uh, receiver. I've got it switched to the stereo mode rather than having it in mono like I did before. So this is the A channel. This is the B channel, back and forth. So you can see how if you had a conversation with somebody, uh, yes, Mr. Jones, what do you think about uh, what happened on Thursday? Then he can, Mr. Jones can talk out of this microphone and give you a, give you like a great interview style mic. Or if you had two reporters, one of them could be in, you know, one speaker, and the other reporter could be in the other. So anyway, this is this is how it works in stereo. So uh, after going back for that that first segment I did, uh, let, me, let me mute this so we can just talk here for a second. So after I went back to the first segment and uh, listened to it and watched the video, I realized that uh, this didn't sound bad at all. It sounds really good, actually. Um, the only thing I did in post, I'm, I'm doing in post processing is I've raised the volume, I've, I've uh, enabled uh, what they call volume leveling so that the volume is up high enough so the gain is like a little bit higher so it sounds good on video. So that's about it. All right, so our, our next step is I wanna take these outdoors and see what kind of range they have and how much interference they're gonna give us. But so far, I'm pretty pleased. All right, today we're taking these WM300 microphones outside. We're at a distance of approximately 120 feet. I'm gonna walk down to my assistant, Bruce, and we're gonna do some talking in stereo mode. So the voices are coming out of the left and the right side speakers. Assistant Bruce here. 
watching my friend Jim pacing 120 feet to see if these stereo microphones perform as we hope they will. It's closing in now. Okay, I'm gonna turn on this camera here. So we've got uh, evidence that you and I actually did this, Bruce. Okay. All right. So Bruce, we're 120 feet away. Uh, I've got us in stereo mode. So you're gonna be coming out of the left side speaker, I think, or the right side, and I'll be coming out of the opposite. So what do you think about the day here today? Well, it's kind of comfortably warm for November. Yeah. It's very still. Very still, except for the weed whacker or the blower we just heard. Yeah, we might have a squirrel falling out of a tree. <laughs> we just, as I was walking up here to turn on the uh, camera, we heard a squirrel up there and he looked like he was jumping from one tree to the other. Yeah, they do that. Sometimes they screw up. <laughs> so uh, we've got it on about volume level number 12, I think. In fact, Bruce's voice is a little bit quieter than mine is, so I had to amp mine down a little bit. Um, so that's it. The great thing about them is they're, they're very heavy duty. It looks like all aluminum construction. They've got an integral lithium ion battery inside that I've been using these things on and off for hours, and they seem to have held the charge. In fact, they're still what, about 75%. Looks like I it. don't have my reading glasses, so <laughs> I couldn't tell you. So anyway, um, and we're going to go back inside. We're going to listen to this, and then we'll have an opinion as to how good they sound, if there's any interference or all that kind of stuff. We may be back out here again, Bruce. It could happen. <laughs> all right, bye for now. Well, after testing these microphones outside, like I did yesterday with my friend Bruce, um, I was really pleased with the sound. The sound quality was good. The way it mimicked our voices was really good. The only mistake I made, and I talked about it earlier, was I should have done the auto scan feature when we were out there. Now, Bruce's microphone seemed to work better than mine did. Mine, uh, when I was turning around or not facing the camera, you could hear where it cut out a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go outside and I'm gonna try this again by myself with my, the same microphone that I did, channel A. And I'm going to do an auto scan first, and then I'm going to go out and do the range, the range thing and see if uh, that makes any difference. But again, I'm very, very pleased with the sound quality. Very pleased. It sounds great. So if we can just get that little glitch that uh, probably was my fault squared away, then uh, we may have some really good microphones here. So anyway, I'm going to head back outside again, and we're going to do this again by myself. Okay, today we're out for our second day of sound testing with the Comica WM300 dual lavalier wireless microphones. So I've got the receiver set up on my Canon 60D, as you can see right here. And then I'm going to be uh, heading down this way, walking to see how good our, uh, our distance works for sound. So what I did was I, um, I pre-scanned it. So I did an auto scan to get the right channel that wouldn't have the noise like I had yesterday, hopefully. And uh, let's see what happens. So here we go. Again, just like we said yesterday, we got about 120 feet down to this area here. I've got the audio on about the number 12 here. So let me uh, shut this off for a quick second. I'm gonna shut the iPhone off so I can mount it on top of this tripod. All right, video's running on the iPhone. 
And again, I'm about 120 feet away from where I was yesterday. So testing one, two, three, sound check one, two, three. Uh, I'm not sure if there is an issue with sound today, but there was yesterday, certainly. When I turned this way and went away from the, uh, went away from the receiver down there, I got a little bit of a glitch. I got some sort of a word. You couldn't hear me talking. So again, 120 feet. Um, I did the auto scan in the channels so that I've got hopefully have a clearer sound with less interference. So let's go inside now and see how that sounds. Again, yesterday I had uh, pretty good results. It, it sounded really good. The sound was clear. It's just that I had those couple of little glitches where the sound kind of shut off because I probably didn't have the channel scanned correctly. All right, let's go inside and check out these WM300s. Well, after running these microphones, this uh, WM300 dual lavalier microphone set, uh, through kind of a little barrage of testing, indoor and outdoor, I am thoroughly impressed with uh, the sound quality and what this thing can do. I had a little bit of glitchiness outside, even in my second part of the video that I did, but I, had, I forgot to turn the power setting on to high. I had it on low. So but I was 120 feet away and I had it on low. So I'm, I'm, I think that's probably my issue that I had out there. But even still, even on low, the sound quality was great. I mean, it just worked great. The other thing that I'm impressed with is the fact that it has, uh, you know, it's got 96 channels um, and the heavy dutiness of this thing. I mean, you've got this nice heavy duty uh, package here that's got lithium ion, I think it's got lithium ion batteries inside that recharge. And I'll tell you, I use these things for hours and they just kept on going. In fact, I've probably used them for hours and I still have about 50 to 75 percent of the battery left on the uh, transmitter and the receiver. I've got full battery left. I charged that a couple of days ago. The, the auto scan feature is a, is a great feature. I know that Sennheiser has that uh, same kind of a feature and it, it works well to find you to find a, uh, a channel that's not uh, doesn't have any interference to it. The, uh, the other thing that's great about this is it is in the legal bandwidth for the United States where some of these things you buy, they're, they're in the 600 and 700 megahertz range and these are right where they're supposed to be in the 520 to 580 megahertz bandwidth. Uh, you know, what I did outside in, in the longer range test, you know, again, it wasn't ideal. There were some things out there that could have caused interference, but I'll tell you, it's still, they still sounded great. And indoor, like I'm doing right now, these things are perfect. Uh, they make great talking head type microphones for what I'm doing right now. The other thing that was kind of interesting to me is uh, at first I was thinking, you know, these are about $479 on Amazon right now at the moment at, at the date of this. Um, and I was thinking, boy, that's, that's a little expensive. Then I got to thinking, no, it's not. You get tr two transmitters and two lavalier mics. The, uh, the other thing that was interesting to me too to think is if you Say you didn't want to go with uh, two transmitters, one receiver. Comica has another, oh, it's a, like a baby brother did this. It's the same exact item, but there's only one transmitter, one receiver. And right now that's $329 on, on Amazon. That's a heck of a deal for what you're getting here. Uh, they've got, again, I talked about the long battery life. They're very, very quiet, especially in the setting I'm doing right here. So anyway, uh, I said all that to say that I highly recommend them. I've been really impressed with the quality of how they're made and the sound quality and all the features that I have. So anyway, thanks for listening to my video. Please, if you haven't already, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.